My name is William Edwin Miller, better known locally as Dusty, which is a nickname I got during my bomber service with the RAAF in England during the Second World War. England declared war on Germany in August 1939 because what Germany had done to Poland and other countries in, in Europe. And because Britain was at war, the empire as we were part of in those days, like Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, they were all part of the British Empire. And of course we were involved because England was involved. And there was something like between 10 and 12,000 Australians that had joined the RAAF and a lot of us, well about that number, were sent over to, uh, to England to fly with the RAF and uh, do the massive bombing in uh, Germany. And just on that issue, the loss ratio with air crew during bomber command was higher than the troops that were involved in the First World War in France. And I'm not talking about numbers, I'm talking about percentage of, of people. And there was something like 50% of air crew that flew with the RAF uh, were deceased. And uh, on, uh, we, we were sent out in, in, in the earlier days in shocking weather conditions without very good navigational aid and, uh, the, and sometimes even the bombers didn't go off. But things did improve with, uh, when radar got better and navigational equipment like G and OBU came into being and we could pinpoint the target better, but the it, it was a very serious, the, the amount of flak, searchlights, bad weather, poor information that was sent out to us about weather conditions and speed and all that sort of stuff. And once we'd taken off, we were on radio silence about contacting a uh, base back in, in England, and uh, but they could send messages to us. Now, in Australia in the early days, there were three musterings per aircrew, pilot, observer and WAG. And WAG wasn't a funny bloke in the team, he was a wireless air gunner. And as, well they were the only three musterings and I, I was a WAG. Uh, and when we got to England, we were attached to an operational training unit and the one I was on was at Silverstone in England, which is now involved with motor racing. And in my light-hearted way and flippant thing has kept me going and lives, helped me live so long, when Silverstone name comes up, I said, oh yeah, I've, I've crashed at Silverstone, letting people sort of think I was in motor racing, but I was, we, we crashed twice in Wellington bombers while I was on the OTU, sole survivor one and uh, we all managed to get out of the other one. All right. Uh, well, just, just tell me about that sole survivor, and what happened there? Well, the plane, the, some of the Wellingtons were pretty old, and just touching on Wellingtons, there were 14,346 Wellingtons built in England between 1936 and 1945. And, uh, and some of the ones that we were on, the, the old one sees, they were pretty old and, and the motors tend to overheat. And on this particular occasion we refer to, the, the motor had caught fire and we were too, too low to jump out and we crashed and the, the, the flames were, were up front and I was in the rear turret and uh, the, the, the fellas up front were engulfing the flames but because I was down the back and I was, managed to rotate the turret round to the side and throw myself out backwards and and that's how I survived and the other fellas didn't. But and, 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 the, and a few weeks later I was back in the air again in another welling. This is before we had been crewed up and uh, we were doing a gunnery exercise and uh, there again the motor caught fire 
and, and we crashed and only the fire stayed more with the, the starboard engine and uh, all the escape places were didn't didn't operate too too well and anyway the pilot had a hatch above his seat and he helped us all out and he got out and we all ran a few yards and lay flat so when the plane did explode eventually and the ammo was flying everywhere and but by doing that the blast sort of went over us and we all survived the second round. So what was that about toxic fumes? Well, the, the flames of the plane burning was sending off toxic fumes because particularly the Wellington bomber had a fabric skin, it didn't have a metal skin and it was kept tight by a stuff we call dope which is still used today on model aeroplanes and as you can well imagine it was very toxic when it was burning and uh, while we were involved in, in that we, we, uh, we were breathing in these toxic fumes, which has left me with a, a lung problem ever, ever since, which is getting worse as I get older.